Kennedy Historic Conversations on Life with John F. Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Caroline Kennedy. Caroline? <laughs> You look great. Thank you. I know you're very busy. I know you've been uh, uh, traveling quite a lot, you, uh, and I appreciate you uh, coming here. You don't need to come here. The book's already a number one bestseller. I want to come here. Well, that's very sweet of you to say. Tell people about the jacket. Is that something we want to discuss This is here? special because um, uh, it's special to be here, and it belonged to my mother, and so I haven't actually worn it, but I thought this was a good one. Nice. That's great. And, um, I saw a picture of her wearing it at a party with Arthur Schlesinger recently. Mm -hmm. And since he was the preeminent historian of his day, and I'm talking to you, mm. I thought, it only makes what sense. could be more appropriate? It, really? <laughs> it's the perfect compliment. Uh, now, uh, uh, I've heard uh, uh, this, uh, these interviews described as part of an oral history of the, of the entire country. Is that what the project was? Well, of, of my father's life and career. Mm -hmm. And so um, after his death, um, my mother and my uncle set about to try to capture memories while they were still fresh. And so the idea is that these kind of interviews that are done right away really bring the person to life. And, um, and then combined with the documents and the archive at the Kennedy Library, you can form a composite picture over time. So who, who else was interviewed? Over a thousand people. It was the biggest people. one that was um, and, and ever have, done. And have those interviews time. been published now as well? A lot of them are open. I guess mm -hmm. they're not that interesting because no one seems to care. <laughs> 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 but um, she was very clear that she was doing it for history, and so she wanted to be as honest as she could, and I think that took a lot of courage. Yeah. And, um, and then put them away so that she wouldn't have to be here when they came out. <laughs> that I could be. So, um, How so old would she be if she were alive now? Well, she was born in 1929. I can't help I that. can't either. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, that makes her my age. <laughs> uh, if she were alive today, would she want these published now? No, she wouldn't want them published when she was alive, mm -hmm. no matter when. But um, she wanted them published. She wanted to put them aside for 50 years. Yeah. And I think um, if she was alive, she'd probably put it out another 50. But, um, but the idea was that, that it would settle. Um, and so I think, and that would allow her to be honest. And I think that that's something that we've gotten used to. People just write these really cautious memoirs. And I think she really deserves a lot of credit for um, making every effort to be as honest as she possibly could. I, I find the whole thing, uh, and forgive me, I find the whole thing, uh, it makes me giddy, honest to God. I, I love this, I love everything about it. Uh, when you're out traveling around and you're signing books and talking to people, who, who responds to this? Is it, is it people in my generation, people younger, people older, everybody? Who do you find is interested Well, I think in? one of the great things about history, and this is really um, living history, I mean, it's becoming history now, is that it really brings generations together because people have heard their families, their parents, grandparents, talk about this and talk about this kind of inspiration that my father represented. And I think that's something that people are hungry for and they're interested in hearing really from her. And also she was so private and she didn't give any interviews. And so this is something she took very seriously. And, um, and so I think for that reason, people are incredibly respectful and interested in what she has to say. And, and uh, uh, did you know pretty much what was going to be in these tapes? Had she alluded to things that had been in the tapes or was it all new to you when you got to them? Uh, well, I had heard many of the stories growing up, and I knew that the tapes existed, but I didn't know exactly what was going to be in there. And, and what about your, your kids? Uh, what was their reaction when they, did they get to hear these uh, the transcripts early on? Um, yeah, well, they read, I gave them to read, because I think they don't really have the patience to do the full listening yet, but maybe they will. <laughs> they will. Um, but they were uh, incredibly fascinated, and of course, they're becoming more and more interested in their grandparents, and, you know, I wish that they got to know them, and so, um, but this really is a way of getting to know my mother and my father. And, and, so and, and, you, and you, when, when you hear your mom talking in, in earnest, uh, three, three, four months after your father his death. How, how, how does it make you feel? Is it, is it, does it make you sad? Does it make you miss your mom even more? What is your reaction when you hear these? Well, I thought it would make me sad to listen, so I didn't listen for a while. But then when I actually did, um, I thought it was wonderful. It was really like, it's like listening in on this conversation, right. and it just brings her to life in such a wonderful way. So, um, so I feel really fortunate that it's here and that she sat down and did it. You know, there was a time, and, and maybe it still exists today, the, the idea uh, that 
anybody with a family should do something like this. And I guess now that the technology is all different, you don't really need to sit down with a tape recorder. But to hear, I wish I had stories uh, from my grandparents right. because I know their lives were completely different than my lives. And I, and I know they struggled and I know uh, my sense is there wasn't a great deal of happiness. So I would like to know how that happened and what made them who they are. Uh, does much of that go on, do you think? Or do you have to be celebrities to do this? Well, no, I think now there's incredible amounts of this. And, and people are um, constantly uh, tracing their family heritage, how they came to America, what their story was. You can upload it on the Ellis Island uh, site and trace you know, your own family diaspora. And, and, and I think it's part of the American story. So every family can do it yeah. now. And, that's and, and w thing. when you hear something like this, you realize the true value of it. Because right. well, it's, it's one of it. those things that, oh, I have an idea, and then you never do you it. You never do it. Yeah. Well, nobody wants to do it. No one wants to listen to themselves. And she would be no exception. Yeah. <laughs> because, um, I watched so the, I uh, uh, the, the Diane uh, uh, Sawyer show with you, uh, the big two-hour special there at ABC. And I don't know what's the matter with me. I saw this footage, and I'm sure you've seen all of the footage before that was on that show. I thought they did a great job with some new kind of... They did a very nice yeah. job of it. But I looked at that footage and, and it, it, all of it made me sad. Right. Did, it, did it make you sad to see that footage? Well, sad and happy. Um, yeah. Because I feel, you know, I'm, I do feel so lucky that they're my parents. And, and I have, I've been, I am so fortunate um, in so many of the values that my family passed down to me and, and in what they represent and how many people's lives they touch. But um, of course it makes me sad because, you know, they're my parents. You talk about values. What, what do you know tangibly now that they, you got from them? Um, well, I think I got a curiosity and I think I got a. Um, desire to help uh, and try to make things better and I think that um, I got a, my mother certainly led by example and in a strength and a self uh, a belief in living life on your own terms and so I think all of those things were really valuable. What, how did she pronounce her name? Well, how do you pronounce her name? I, I all <laughs> up until the Diane Sawyer show I called her Jacqueline Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, Diane well, Sawyer. Well you still are I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you wouldn't believe what a big deal this has become. Really. The pronunciation of her name? Yes. Well, I, was I had stunned, no honestly. idea that I was starting down this path. I never would have opened my mouth. But I knew there was one. You know how you have those things that really bother your parents, and they're not really a big deal to anyone else, but you feel as their child like sure. they should bother you too. Okay, well that was this, and mm -hmm. I should have just left it alone. But I opened my mouth, and now and nobody can pronounce it. Everyone's confused. People are coming up to me constantly. What is, as you understand it, your mother liked to be referred to as? Jacqueline Kennedy. Jacqueline Kennedy, which is actually more the way it's spelled. It's not really spelled Jacqueline, is it? No. 